They had a great product, they just didn't know how to sell it. The Aka Hill tribe in northern Thailand produces world class coffee, but unscrupulous coffee brokers were taking advantage of them. That is, until a Vancouver businessman stepped in to help. Tonight, in part two of our series, Linda Aylesworth zeroes in on the relationship between John Darch and the Aka tribe to show the profound effect it's had on their ability to grow their business. The monsoon season is finally relenting in northern Thailand. Now that the sun is making an increasing number of appearances, the coffee cherries are starting to turn red, a sign that they're ready to pick. <laughs> The Aka Hill tribe started growing and harvesting coffee 20 years ago. But in spite of their efforts and high quality beans, their crop wasn't paying off. They are very poor people, very poor people. Even in their own country, until very recently, they've never been acknowledged. They are a displaced society. Until recently, because of John Darge, a retired Canadian mining executive who learned about their plight from this man. The people still not strong enough. After dedicating 10 years of his life to helping the Aka, it became clear to Uicha Pramyong that outside help was required if the villagers of Doi Chang were to succeed in raising themselves out of poverty. John Darge seemed up for the challenge. Kun John said, if he has chance, he will come and help at least to get the market in Canada. That was the first met for, for five years ago. When I first arrived, Vichai brought me along to the washing plant where he produced the coffee. And here it is, a very, very small plant, very limited capability. After sending some of the Arabica beans away for analysis and learning that they were the very highest quality, John and his son created the Doi Chang Coffee Company. The Aka were made 50% partners and were paid beyond fair trade prices for their beans. Less than four years later, there's already been a transformation. Since we've been involved, the amount of money we can generate in Canada has allowed the farmers to expand their washing stations, expand their drying stations. The new facility can process 1,700 tons of coffee beans a season, six times more than just two years ago. Here, the coffee cherries come from the hillsides to be washed. The ones that float are rejected and turned into fertilizer. The ones that sink move on to the pulper, which separates the sweet flesh from the beans within. So after two days of fermentation, you wash it properly, and now you use the fresh water, the fresh spring water, soak it for 24 hours. You know, that to clean it properly. After the water is shaken off the beans, and every stray bean painstakingly recovered, they're spread out on the ground to dry in the high mountain air. Only the premium beans will be used by Doi Chang. The other 40% go to other buyers. We'll take a small percentage like this one here, which is a consistent good bean. These are beans that are non-ripened. This one's a rotten bean. This one's undersized. That's chipped. The sorting takes place here. Doing it by hand is labor intensive, but less is missed this way. Then it's off to the roaster. Getting this 90 year old antique roaster up the mountain eight years ago was a mammoth feat. Back then, they didn't have any roads, so they had to build one and haul it up piece by piece, all six tons of it. Since then, the Aka have earned enough money to invest in a second, newer roaster. Now they can process eight tons a month for the Asian market. That's 25% of the beans they harvest. As for the other 75%... This is our 900 square meter uh, warehouse. And uh, behind me here, we have our next two containers of green beans to go to Vancouver. This year, over 800 tons of premium green coffee beans will be shipped from the warehouse in Doi Chang to Richmond, B.C. They've come here to Canterbury Coffee Company, and at Canterbury Coffee Company, what they do is they roast the beans, they pack them, and they distribute them to grocery stores and uh, coffee shops. This recent partnership with Canterbury, the largest gourmet roasting facility in Western Canada, is just what Doi Chang Coffee needs to get a foothold in the growing gourmet coffee market. It's also exactly what Canterbury was looking for. We have a very short supply of organic fair trade coffee in the marketplace. 
Um, more and more coffee houses are looking for that product. Lightheart's recent visit to Doi Chang Village clinched the deal. They've taken their coffee from not even being known to being raided in the 1991 um, area, and it's just exciting to see that happening. So we feel good that we're part of that, giving back to, to those people. Those are the children that will benefit a lot. Helping the ACA to help themselves is what it's all about. Darch is funding the venture with his own money. With Canterbury's help, he hopes to crack the international market. But for now, getting the brand and the cause better known here at home is an excellent start. I was living a comfortable life. I could have retired, but there's a much greater feeling and passion towards this project than anything else I've done before. Yeah. Well, tomorrow we're going to learn a little more about the Aka people and see exactly how selling coffee to Canadians is changing their lives for the better. And if you'd like a lot more web extras on this story, just log on to our website. There's video and pictures and a blog at globaltvbc.com. Just click on links in the news.